So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this color picker UI using Python, Pygame, and another module called Pygame GUI. So by the end of this video, you're going to have this color picking app. As you can see, we have a black square, which is going to change to the color that we pick. We're going to have a pick color button here, which you can hover over, you can click, and you're going to be able to change your color here. So you can go ahead and click here if you want to, to change it to whatever you want, press OK, and it changes to that exact color. You can also control these sliders here. So you can control the hue, saturation, all the RGB values, and create your own color here. And yeah, you can use this for any kind of game you want, but you're going to need to have some basic Python and Pygame knowledge for this. With that being said, if you like the first 30 seconds of this video, please consider liking it. If you really liked it, then subscribe. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Let's get into the video. So I've started out here with this boilerplate, which you can copy and paste from the pasteman link in the description or in the pinned comment. So this boilerplate here creates this uh, screen. As you can see, we have our gray background and then we have our black square in the middle, which we will change to the color that we choose. There's nothing really special about this boilerplate, it's just normal pie game boilerplate. If you don't understand that, then you can check the video in the top right right now, which goes through it. The only thing kind of special about this is that we're using time delta to actually manually change the FPS to something more reasonable for pie game GUI. So normally we just have it at 60, but because we're using pie game GUI, this is actually going to be super fast. As you can see in the demonstration here, when we leave it at 60, the cursor blinks super fast, which is obviously not what we want. So this makes it a more reasonable frame rate. And we also have our UI manager for Pygame GUI, which is just going to, like the name suggests, manage all of our UI elements. So with that out of the way, let's get into actually making the button. So right here, we're going to create our button and it's going to be called color picker button. And it's going to be equal to a UI button which is how you make a button using Pygame GUI. By the way, if you haven't actually installed Pygame GUI, I forgot to go over that. But if you haven't done that, then you can check out my previous video where I showed you how to do it. It's in the first part of the video. Just go through that. It's basically just go into your terminal, type in pip install Pygame GUI, and you're done. It's that simple. Anyways, continuing here, we have our UI button, and we have to pass in a couple of parameters. The first one is going to be the relative rect. So the relative rect is going to be a rect that tells us where the button is going to be and how big it's going to be. So here we're going to pass in pygame.rect. If you don't know what a rect is in pygame, it's just a piece of information that tells us how big we want something to be and where we want to put it. So here we're going to pass in, first of all, the x and y. This is going to be negative 180 and negative 60. And you may be wondering, why are the x and y values negative? And I will explain this later in a couple of seconds. So here we're going to have to also pass in the width and the height. That's going to be 150 and 30 for us. We're also going to have to pass in some more parameters. Let's give some indentation here. And let's say the text is going to be equal to something that says pick color. Then we're going to pass in the manager, which is going to be equal to the UI manager, which allows us to manage this button and control it with Pygame GUI. And here we're going to have to have some anchors, which is why we have negative X and Y values. Let's go ahead and create the anchors. Anchors is going to be equal to a dictionary in Python, and it's going to have four key value pairs. So the first one is going to be left. So basically, this is telling us where do we want to align the left side of our button to and we actually want to align the left side of our button to the right side of the screen. So for this, we're going to say we want the left side of the button to be aligned to the right side of the screen. And this explains why we have negative 180 as our x value. So let's say this is the right of the screen. By saying negative 180, we want the button to be 180 pixels to the left of the screen. Hope that makes sense. Now, that's our left key value pair done. We also have to pass in the right key value pair. Let's indent once again. We're going to say right is equal to right as well. Now we have to pass in the top and the bottom. So top is going to be equal to bottom. So once again, the reason for this negative 60 is because we want the top of the button to be at the bottom of the screen. So since we're aligning it to the bottom of the screen, we want to say that the button should be 60 pixels from the bottom of the screen. If you're wondering why negative 60 moves us up from the bottom of the screen, it's actually very simple. In Pygame, as you increase your Y value, you actually move down. And as you decrease it, you move up. So decreasing it by 60 would move us up by 60 pixels. I hope that makes sense. Lastly, we're going to say bottom. And bottom is also going to be equal to bottom. So those are our four key value pairs, we have our button completely made. Let's go ahead and run this and see if we can get it. And uh, actually, yeah, we can. 
because we have our UI manager processing the events and actually drawing the UI on the screen. So we have pick color, but when we click it, nothing happens. This is what we're gonna change now. Now we're gonna add the actual color picker functionality. So as you can see right here, we have our color picker variable, which currently is set to none because we don't have our actual color picker UI made. We're gonna make it when we actually press the button. And to check if we have pressed the button, we need to go inside of our Pygame event loop and check for the event that contains our button being pressed. So this specific event is gonna be if event.type, so that event is gonna be Pygame GUI dot UI button pressed. So this means if we have pressed the button and event dot UI element. So if we have pressed a button, now we're checking if we have pressed it, which button have we pressed? So event dot UI element is equal to color picker button. If both of those conditions are met, then we're going to say color picker is equal to UI color picker dialog. Here we're going to have to pass another rec. We're going to say pi game dot rec. So the X and Y is gonna be 160 and 50 respectively. And then we're gonna have our width and height, which are gonna be 420 and 400 also respectively. As you can see, we didn't use any negative numbers here because we don't have any anchors. We want this to be 160 pixels from the left of the screen and 50 pixels from the top of the screen. All right, continuing on here, we're gonna create, we're actually, we're gonna pass in our UI manager. So we're gonna say UI manager. Next, we're gonna pass in our initial color and our window title. First, we're gonna say window title is equal to something like change color. And uh, actually, I put that outside. And the last thing we're gonna say is initial color. So when we open up this color picker, what is the initial color gonna be? That's gonna be equal to current color. So in our case, we define current color as pygame.color000, which means black. So when we open up this color picker dialog, we're gonna get black as our default color. Let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. So let's pick color. And as you can see, we do get our color picker dialog with the default color being black. We can change this to whatever we want. And when we press okay, we should expect that the black square here changes to red, for example. But no, that doesn't happen for a very simple reason. We never implemented that. So let's go ahead and implement that. So here underneath our event, uh, if statement here, we're gonna say another one, we're gonna say if event dot type is equal to pi game gy dot UI color picker color picked. So our UI color picker here, if we have picked a color on that, then what should we do? We should say current color is equal to event dot color. So if we, for example, clicked on red, then our current color would be equal to red. Next, we're gonna say picked color surface, which is the surface that controls this black square dot fill current color. So now in this case, our current color would be, or our picked color surface actually would be filled with the current color. Let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. So we have our black square, pick color. Let's pick, uh, actually let's pick something else. Let's pick, I think this is, this qualifies blue. Yeah, I'm actually colorblind for anyone who doesn't know, but I guess, I think this is blue. It might be purple, I don't know. Okay, and yeah, we get blue or purple, whatever this color is. And now we're almost done. One last thing that we have to implement though is we want to disable the color picker button if we're currently picking a color. So we're gonna say color picker button dot disable. Then we're gonna check if uh, event dot type equals pi game GUI dot UI window close. So basically if we have closed the color picker UI window, then we should enable the color picker button. So color picker button dot enable. And we're gonna say color picker is equal to none. This is gonna remove the color picker. Running our code, let's see what happens. So we have our color picker here, pick color. We can't pick another color unless we're done with our current one. Okay, done, pick color, close, done. You know, everything works. So yeah, that's gonna be the end of the tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you found it helpful or enjoyed in any way, please consider liking the video. And if you really liked it, then subscribe to the channel because according to my YouTube analytics, Literally no one in the world is subscribed to my channel, so if you wanna change that, consider subscribing. I hope to see you in the next video, but until then, have a good day.